So you're looking to get creative this Valentine's Day? Well in this video I'm going to show you how to do a mixed media painting that would make an ideal front for a Valentine's card. Coming up! Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And for this painting today, you can see I've already sketched out the main outline of the Eiffel Tower, just to help with proportion. Colours wise we're going with the cool blue, the warm red, titanium white and of course a sharpie pen. That's going to be the starting point to get our painting going. Now the whole point of this painting guys is to show you how you really can be quite creative when it comes to mixing up different techniques and media. So although people like to think of acrylic painting as just a traditional uh, format or a traditional medium to use, I'm going to show you today how you can actually use acrylic paint to give almost a watercolour effect to your painting and especially when you start to work it over ink. So this is a permanent marker. You can use pens as well which will actually dilute the ink a little bit more but for the benefit of this painting as you'll see later we actually need this ink to not run quite so much so in that context using a permanent marker is a little bit more appropriate for this painting. So I'm just going with quite a loose sketch for the uh, Eiffel Tower itself. You can see I've exaggerated the perspective here so I've really got this sense of forced perspective just to give the actual composition a little bit more of a dynamic feel to it. Now the key when it comes to mark making like this guys is you don't want to be too accurate. It is a sketch so I want to give that lovely sketchy feel. So here you can see I'm just going to be adding some darker shaded areas but with a range of mark making techniques so that I'm not just literally colouring it in. I'm giving that lovely sketchy feel to it. If you've watched a lot of my videos previously guys you'll know that I like that looser technique to painting and to art. It just gives much more of a stylized feel. It enables you to have a bit, a bit more identity when it comes to painting. So it gives a really lovely looser technique in that context just because it helps to stylize your painting. So I'm really going to exaggerate some of the darker areas just here just to really make that three-dimensional quality to your drawing. There is always a fine line as well between being loose with your technique um, and being scruffy. So, you know, you've got to be very aware whenever you do this style of painting or style of drawing that there has to be a focal point to it. And I always emphasize the shaded areas in that context because it will just help give a little bit more direction to the mark making technique that you use. So you'll notice I'm actually doing a few little scribbles. It's trying to reflect the ironwork that you find in the Eiffel Tower. There's loads of cross sections. It's quite a complex, intertwined, almost nest-like construction. So I'm just giving that suggestion by doing these zigzag angles as well, just to really add that complexity to some of the marks within the Eiffel Tower. And it's, it's a lot of these buildings are quite iconic, and it's how you reflect that. So you're trying to reflect that through the marks we're making to give that sense of construction. Something like the Eiffel Tower, it's such an iconic building. Uh, and it's the same with something like Big Ben, any, anything in the world that's really, really famous. They're actually quite tricky to draw because they are so common for people to see. If you do an error, if you make them look a little bit too exaggerated, for example, if I made the Eiffel Tower um, too much of a triangle, then it wouldn't reflect the building design itself. So it's important that you go for accuracy. So you know, the fact that you've got these sort of central cross sections going across in the middle, that's important that we get that sense of, of, of shape to the tower. I apologize for the top here, guys. I, my camera's not quite zoomed at the top enough, but I'm just doing a bit of a cross section so you can get that sense of the top of the tower, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. So you can see I've really worked quite a lot of depth in terms of shade. Um, I don't think at this stage you can over exaggerate the contrast because when we come to work with the paint in a moment, you're going to lose some of that depth. So you probably want to work a little bit darker than you ordinarily would if you were just doing this as a regular sketch. Now this painting is called A Love Letter to Paris. So what I'm gonna do now is just add a little bit of script. Uh, I was going to use some old letters that I had, or old love letters that I had, but actually it was just a little bit more practically easier just to do the actual script on um, the card yourself. So of course, if you were making this a personal card, you can write whatever message you want. I'm just making it more about the aesthetic quality, so I'm just writing a bit of poetry here, just to really build up that sort of 
aesthetic background. So it's, you know, paintings are all about aesthetic and meaning or aesthetic and context. Um, and that's where they really come into their own. So you can make this as personal as you want. Uh, but of course that's up to you in terms of how much you want to actually put onto the background. But it is ultimately just giving more of a design quality to the card. But with it being your own personal painting, of course you can do whatever you want. But you'll notice I'm trying to just, I'm working the words in more of a random manner. But I don't want to over dominate where the Eiffel Tower is, is as well. Because I, I want the focus to obviously be on the structure of the tower. So the pen I'm using here, you'll notice it's slightly different. This is not a permanent marker, so it will bleed a little bit more. And I, I kind of like that because it's almost like these love letters are, are distant letters. They've sort of merged into your memory and your memory's got a little bit blurry. And again, if you people who watch a lot of my videos know that I like to put a lot of meaning into paintings. Everything has meaning. Uh, I don't just paint because I think it looks pretty. I want there to be a purpose behind it. It's just a personal choice. I, I just, I get a lot of enjoyment out of things having depth, having layers when it comes to people. And, and when you interpret something, I think it means a lot more if you can recognize what those meanings are. So the good old trusty sponge is coming into play now. So I'm just gonna build up some of that background quality. I don't want the blue when I use it to be overpowering. I'm also aware that when I'm using the sponge here, I'm not completely going over the letters or the words. I do want them to be readable, but at the same time, I'm still trying to just add a little bit of texture to my background. I think in any painting like this, this, this would be the equivalent of priming you, the canvas. It's really just enabling me to actually manipulate the blue in a moment with more, uh, just more accuracy because I've got that layer of white going on in the background already. If you haven't used sponges before, guys, uh, for those of you, again, that watch a lot of my videos, I do love sponges when it comes to acrylic painting because they just enable you to blend paint so easily. But if you haven't tried using them as a tool, I really can't recommend them enough. You have a lot more control than you think, whether it's just using the corner like I'm doing at the moment or just using them to cover large areas or canvases. They are a fantastic tool for really speeding up any painting techniques that you may do. They're brilliant for things like clouds, uh, they're brilliant for oceans, they're brilliant for uh, sunsets if you're doing blended quality very, very quickly. So if you haven't used them already, definitely get out there and, uh, and it's good for the environment. It's always good to use recycled equipment, obviously. So you can see it's almost a baby blue that I'm producing. It's a very, very subtle blue. I don't want my colors to be too overpowering because I want you to be able to read those words ultimately and see the Eiffel Tower standing out with that contrast. So just to give you an idea, I'm barely touching the page with the sponge. I think the lighter you are, the more control you get in terms of those lovely, subtle, light colors. Remember I earlier said I'm almost creating like a watercolor effect, but using acrylic. And that's because I'm using the sponge very, very lightly. And you'll notice some of those letters where they're starting to bleed now. That's because of the type of pen that I use. But I won't have that problem with the Eiffel Tower, as I said earlier, because it is a permanent marker. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue at the bottom to make it a bit more contrasting. So a little bit darker around the corners. The composition of any painting, guys, is crucial. So I'm almost giving like a border to my painting here where the dark edges are just going to really enable your eye to focus on the actual Eiffel Tower in the middle. But at the same time, I don't want it to just be a flat color in the background. It's almost cloud-like, dreamlike. I think that's probably a fair analogy because it is ultimately about memories, lost memories. Um, you know, and, and in a moment, you're going to see a technique that I'm going to do, which was a little bit sad. It's reflecting tears, but, you know, you could have happy memories. It's all about just thinking in terms of, of lost relationships, uh, lost moments, just trying to reflect the idea of what, what Valentine's means to different people. Just adding a little bit more white at the bottom here, just to add some of that control. 
so that I'm just getting a little bit too dark because that's the problem with a sponge. If you put too much paint onto the sponge, you're going to lose that control. So it's always handy to have two or three sponges just to the side in case you do get too much paint onto your sponge. It's all about making sure you understand what it is in terms of the level of paint you're using. You should never feel that you're out of control with, with whatever tool, whether it's a brush, whether it's a sponge, whether it's a finger painting. You are the artist. You are the one that's in control. Guys, if you haven't hit the like button already, I'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel greatly when people do hit the like button. And again, if you haven't subscribed, we do do weekly videos. Um, I like to try and share tips with particularly beginner artists or people who just want to get back into painting, just to try and show them how easy and simple some of these techniques can be. I'm passionate when it comes to making art as effective and simple as you can. Uh, so, you know, there's many, many techniques out there that will really help you to do maybe techniques that you didn't think were possible or you haven't tried before. You know, if you haven't done a mixed media piece like this where you've actually mixed acrylic paint with, with a permanent marker, get out there and try it. See what happens. So this is where I'm talking about now in terms of the, the tears. I'm just putting some thick, uh, darker paint at the top. And again, I apologize that the camera's slightly missing that at the top. But all I'm doing here is just layering up um, some water now into the paint. So in a moment, I'm going to tilt the picture. And then naturally, the gravity is just going to enable those tears just to drop down, almost like rainfall. So here, I'm just going to let it tilt naturally. You're going to lose a little bit of control in terms of where those drips go. I like that. I don't want them to be too straight. I want it just to naturally fall. You may have to add some more water. So this one up here has just stopped. So I'm just going to take my brush. I'm just going to encourage it to, to keep dripping with a little bit more water on the page. If you add too much water at this stage, what will happen is you're going to lose the quality of pigment. So all that will happen is your water will just remove the paint that you've got in the background. So it's a fine balance. It's almost 50-50. 50% acrylic, 50% water. So for example here, now there's too much water on that drip. So it will be subtle, but I want a little bit more paint going through there. I'm just going to encourage this one to drip a little bit further down. There we go. And it's just, again, giving a bit more context to the painting, a little bit more meaning. People can interpret it in whichever they, way they want. They might interpret it as a rainy day in Paris. They might interpret it as tears. It could be happy tears. There's no right or wrong when it comes to your paintings. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, it gives a lovely aesthetic quality but it's also nice if people can interpret it in their own way too. Now I'm just going to work over some of the marks on the Eiffel Tower itself. I, I don't like that it stands out so much. I'm, it's a little bit too black at the moment. So I'm just going to exaggerate some of those darker areas with the blue acrylic. So this brush here, I'm just using a very small, it's actually a size zero um, flat headed brush just to give me a little bit more control over those lines. It's almost a monochromatic painting this, so it's literally just variations of blue. I know I've got the red um, lined up there, but you'll see why in a moment. That's just gonna be the, fi the finishing touch, but it's very much a predominantly blue, blue painting. And again, you can interpret that in terms of is that blue for sadness? Or is it just blue for the beautiful, cold, sunny morning? It, there's no right or wrong in terms of interpretation. I think it really brings out some of those, that lovely contrasting colour as well. It, it just takes away any of those harsh lines as well. So any areas that you didn't like in terms of the mark making, you can actually hide hide those errors or hide those areas that you don't like so much with, with the blue pigment. It also helps as well, when I went over the white earlier, I did lose some of the, the, the lines and the detail. So again, I'm just working some of those back through with the blue paint. I 
Now, when it comes to the the legs, I, I actually want them almost to bleed into the black into the background itself, just so it's got that lovely dream hazy like feeling. But at the moment, they're a bit too sharp the edges, but I'm just going to soften those in a moment just to help them blend into the background. So here's the red I was talking about earlier. This has got to be a very subtle pink, guys. Okay, so mainly white. I mean, you're almost looking at probably 70 to 80 percent white with 20 percent red. And we're just going to give a very subtle hint of hearts in the background. So again, it's that lovely contrast of memories. Some happy memories, loving memories, some sad memories. You can interpret it in whichever way you want. If you wanted to make it a really happy Valentine's card, then you may not have the tears dripping down it, for example. But you have control in terms of how you want to produce uh, a beautiful aesthetic quality, but again, that has that subtle meaning in the background. And it's got to be subtle because again, you don't want to lose those words. They should still be readable. So you just a little bit of water through the brush as well here, just so we can give that hint. If you have enjoyed the video guys, then please do hit that like button. As I said earlier, it does help our channel. And if you want to see some more weekly top tips and suggestions of paintings like this one, then do hit that subscription button and the notification bell because we do upload weekly videos. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And there you have it, a love letter to Paris. See you next time.